Hey guys and welcome back for another Guild Wars 2 guide. Today we're going to be talking about Ascended Trinkets. In my previous videos I covered armor and weapons, even how to swap those stats if you really want to. In this guide we're going to talk about how to get you those Ascended Trinkets so you can finally have a full set of Ascended if you desire. Anyway guys, let's get started. Alright guys, so first of all, I've used the term trinkets a few times now, but I actually haven't explained that. A few of you might know what this is already, but for those of you who are new to this, trinkets include two accessories, two rings, one back piece, and one amulet. So unlike ascended weapons and armor, which can be crafted, you're going to need to visit vendors across Tyria in order to get your ascended trinkets. If you're a player who's very keen on 100% completion in the achievements track, you can get certain collections and get certain numbers of achievements, and the game will actually reward you with some of these just for completing those. However, for this guide, we're going to focus on the vendors of Guild Wars 2 and how to obtain things that way. If you'd like to see a separate guide on how to get those through collections and story steps, let me know in the comments and I'll probably make a guide on that. So firstly, let's focus on mainland Tyria, that is, before Heart of Thorns or any of the living world content. As I mentioned in previous guides, you can use laurels combined with other components and gold to purchase your ascended trinkets, but you'll be limited to core Tyria stats. You can buy amulets and rings for just laurels, but if you want some of the accessories, you're going to need to include 50 globs of ectoplasm. Now if you'll recall, globs of ectoplasm are used for all sorts of crafting in the game, so maybe it's not not the best idea to use these, but this is one of the options that you have at your disposal. Also, if you'd prefer to save some of those laurels and you play a little bit of World vs. World, you can use Badges of Honor combined with laurels to purchase the same trinkets but with less laurels. Unfortunately, this method also requires 50 globs of ectoplasm for your accessories. Depending on what stats you're looking for, you can also use a Guild Commendation Trader. Now this requires you to be in an active guild and have saved up some guild commendations, but for 12 commendations and 5 gold, there's a pretty good array of stat commendations to choose from. Lastly, for Core Tyria, you can do Fractals of the Mist and earn Pristine Fractal Relics in order to get two of your rings. Pristine Fractal Relics can be earned on level 10 Fractals of the Mist or higher, and only require 10 relics per ring. Moving on from Mainland Tyria and on to the Silver Waste or the beginning of Living World Season 2, you can visit the Priory Historian who will sell you amulets, rings, and accessories for a thousand bandit crests and ten gold each. The bandit crests are obtained by doing events and getting drops from enemies, completing story instances of the living world, or by going for some of the Living World Season 2 achievements. The trinkets that you can obtain this way have set stat types, so if you're looking for something specific, you might want to try another method. Heart of Thorns itself did introduce a few new stat types, but unfortunately all you can find in the expansion are recipes for exotic versions of those trinkets and a few achievement reward tracks you can complete to actually obtain physical ascended trinkets. That being said, we're going to go ahead and move on to Living World Season 3. For Living World Season 3, every release has brought us a new map with a new currency. That currency, combined with Unbound Magic, a resource that you obtain by doing basically anything on these maps, will award you with some ascended trinkets. The amount of this map-specific currency is going to vary, so to keep things simple, I'll try just to talk about the things you can obtain. In Bloodstone Fen, you can get Blood Rubies to get yourself a back piece, amulet, or ring. In Ember Bay, you can use Petrified Wood to get yourself an accessory or a back piece. In Bitter Frost Frontier, you can use Fresh Winter Berries to get yourself a ring, back item, or accessory. And for the newest map as of making this video, Lake Doric, you can use Jade Shards to get yourself a back piece or an amulet. The special resource for each map can be obtained basically the same way, which is why I lumped these all together. Every map has a new node on it that you can harvest to get the specified resource for that map. Or you can do map completion, achievements, or events. All of these ascended trinkets are stat selectable, meaning you double click on the item once it's in your inventory, and you can pick 
any stat, Corateria or Heart of Thorns. Even better than that, if you got your trinkets from Bloodstone Fen, you can spend 100 Unbound Magic on a Bloodstone Capacitor, and once a day, you can actually swap those stats. As of right now, that's the only way to swap stats on Ascended Trinkets, so something to keep in mind if you decide to use this method to get your trinkets. Before I go into what I think's easiest to obtain these things, I do have a few honorable mentions. If after the addition of Heart of Thorns you found yourself in the raiding scene, you can use Magnetite Shards along with some gold to buy weapons, armor, trinkets, back items, all of it in ascended quality. From what I've come to understand, this requires a great deal of skill and you'll need some decent armor going in to even start earning these. Similarly, if you're big into PvP, you can obtain Shards of Glory by completing your PvP League reward tracks and gear yourself up for PvE all in the confines of the Heart of the Mist. I mention these last because I have the least experience with these game types, but also because I know a lot of PvE players don't particularly enjoy PvP or don't play it as often as you would need to in order to obtain these items, and raids are some of the hardest content in this game, at least in the beginning it's probably not a bad idea to overgear yourself while you're learning these fights, meaning you'd probably already have this ascended gear going in. So now let's talk about what I think is the easiest way to gear up your character. As you can see, there are plenty of ways to do it, so feel free to do it however you like, but I hope maybe my method will save some people some headaches and some time. If you're just looking for those core Tyria stats, I recommend playing Fractals of the Mist to get your two rings, and then buying the rest through the Laurel Vendor. Specifically the World vs. World Laurel Vendor because those badges of honor save you a few laurels and speed up the process. That game type might sound pretty intimidating, but as someone who recently played a whole lot of it, it's really not that hard to obtain badges of honor, roaming around with a large group of people, and just having fun taking over castles and killing enemy players. But if you're really not into World vs. World and you don't mind losing out on a couple of extra laurels, the regular laurel vendors are just fine too. Likewise, if you don't feel like you're ready for Fractals of the Mist, feel free to just buy all of it from the Laurel Vendor. Now if you're going for those Heart of Thorns stat types, the answer really probably won't surprise you. I'd recommend playing all of the Living World Season 3 maps. Because these are stat selectable and a few can even be stat swappable, it's hard to argue any other method. Now I will tell you that each one of these map specific resources can only be harvested once per day. There are a lot of areas around the map to harvest these, but once they're gone, they're gone until the day resets. But once you get used to where these nodes spawn, you can clear this out in less than an hour and be back to playing whatever content in Guild Wars 2 you enjoy the most. And with that guys, I'm going to wrap up this guide. Please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. I hope somebody found this helpful. If I forgot or left something out, please let me know. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.